Well, thanks for thanks for doing this. This is gonna yeah, be fun. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I don't uh, poke you too hard here. But <laughs> ah, it's all good. Sure. Um, so, first question I had is, how long ago did the team come up with the idea to do the endless archive, and how long did it take y'all to build it? So, uh, we started this. I, I would say last year. It's so probably about a year and a half or so, and it was mainly like, you know early concepts of like hey uh it is i think it was mainly me and rich kind of like chatting about you know what this would be it actually was input from fire or two about what this would kind of uh be and then it started as as initial design and stuff because the team is always working on stuff not just now but stuff in the future and stuff so we had to figure out when we would kind of slot it in but once development started in earnest, once we had all the documentation kind of down of like, this is what we want and stuff like that, and let the team run with it. Then it took about, uh, probably about six months to eight, six to eight months or something. Oh, wow. Like that. And that's a lot of off and on time. Um, I mean, typically for, for a piece of content. So every dungeon, it's about three months ish. Uh, and we had dedicated a full two dungeon pack worth of work to this thing so that mm. was about about six months it took a little bit longer than we uh anticipated uh because uh when we started to do this because it's brand new and it's never been done before in eso we didn't know the problems we were going to have we were we knew that there were going to be problems that come up and we just didn't know what they were going to be so then we had to rapidly kind of like solve for those issues and stuff like that so yeah i would say about six to eight months took us to in with full design and earnest uh to, to get it out I mean, to me th the scope of it that seems pretty quick <laughs> like, <laughs> does, were, it seems like y'all were on it so. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and so it's it's it, 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 we break it down into into different things so each of the designers was responsible for different things where this um it played into our strengths was reusing you know um bosses and stuff like that took a lot of work but it wasn't mm. creating abilities wholesale and, and whole cloth it was it was taking abilities that we had then adapting them to kind of the environment and stuff you're in so that played to our strengths of like all right we already have this stuff so we dedicated different designers to doing different things where the the uh areas that crept up are probably stuff that people uh wouldn't readily recognize stuff like the stage structure and how that's going to work the versions visions all those had to be done completely new and stuff like that so but yeah they were uh the team has been uh hammering away at it and it was a put up put down kind of thing which is what's typical for us like uh, the trial balance happened right in the middle of kind of development of this so we put it down but that also helps this is another thing is we were engaged with many more teams than we typically are uh typically when we do a dungeon we're engaged with the fixture team, the character team, uh, and that kind of stuff. But for this, we had to go with the we had to go talk to the back end engineers because we had to get a whole new structure for how this was going to work. We had to integrate with our UI team, not just for the new leaderboards that we were going to do and a new way to do that, but also all of the versus and vision UI and all that other stuff and how that mm -hmm. was going to operate and stuff. So it was a very collaborative thing. And what when we when we were able to put it down from a design aspect. That allowed some of those other teams to kind of catch up and put those things in so that when we, we picked it back up, we had some of those elements already integrated. Well, cool. Well, I know for me, my gears have already been turning, thinking about ways that the archive could be expanded on in the uh -huh. future. Like, have you guys thought about ways you want to expand on it? And is there anything you can share about areas specifically that you might touch to add well, we stuff to? We won't be able to talk about specifics uh, mm -hmm. or anything really to, co to commit to anything. But I will say that to highlight what exactly that you just said. You said, oh, I already have my gears turning on how this could be expanded. Mm -hmm. And that was very very much a fundamental part of the design we were going for. Is we wanted to be able, this to be uh, uh, a system that we could you know, add to and enhance and make better and, and do different things with and stuff like that. So that's definitely went into it in the initial design. So yeah, it, it has been thought about and stuff like that. But as far as specifics are concerned, you, you know, you're not going to get into any of that. So, <laughs> but yes, it is one of those things of of it, from the ground up, we built it to be able to kind of uh, meet those needs. Cool. Uh, one area that I've seen a lot of discussion around. Uh, there's so many item sets in the game right now. I think it's like 600 ish. Yeah, um, there's a lot. And the five piece sets seem to be taking up the majority of those at the moment yep. um so i was a bit surprised that the class sets ended up as full five piece sets mm -hmm. um so i know myself and others would like to see more configurations introduced in the future we don't see as often like 
one piece, two piece, three piece. Can you talk about if there are any plans to introduce like alternative types of configurations? Maybe uh, this is uh, something that could be in the archive. I would say that um, uh, I think that the one pieces are uh, at the moment in the exclusivity of the mythics. And I think that that's because that kind of scratches that itch and it actually mm -hmm. makes a, a compelling uh, reason to go after the one piece uh, set bonuses as far as others we've heard uh, some of this feedback and I know that that team the combat team who's responsible for doing that takes all of that feedback in and stuff so um, there's inherent dangers uh, that that you would ha that would need to be kind of navigated for that and stuff like that if because we, we have uh, certain budgets and everything that we account for five p bonuses and, and stuff like that so right. we added a bunch of three piece bonuses and everybody's getting a lot more power out of the system than they than they probably would uh, would have otherwise we would have to account for that but I know that uh, that doesn't mean that uh, it's it's not thought of as a potentially a viable thing for the future but again that's uh kind of in the realm of the, uh, of the combat team but i know that they have heard that feedback and have uh and, and it's on their you know it's on their radar of stuff to look at for sure okay cool switching gears a little bit uh with the archive being designed for one or two people and uh many of the bosses having some of those traditional hard-hitting mechanics that require a tank uh many I felt that running with a tank and a damage dealer is kind of the most practical way to go through it as a duo. Are there, I know you can't probably can't say specifics, but um, I know I've seen people question like, well, maybe this seems like the kind of thing they could open up to three or four players also in the future so that maybe a healer could also work their way into this. Cause right now people are just like, yeah, there's not really much reason to bring a healer in here. It just doesn't kind of fit with the whole dynamic. So it's, is that something that you guys might look at with this? Um, but potentially, I don't think that we have. Um, I think that there's so much content we have for four players mm -hmm. uh, and, and that I don't imagine us. Uh, not to mention just the structure with how this is built. I don't. I don't envision us being doing that. Um, nothing's out of the realm of possibilities. Um, w w this is going to be very much dictated by kind of like uh, play trends and, and and stuff like that. Um, but we don't have a really we haven't envisioned this for for four players um, in that regard because we already have so much content to kind of gear mm -hmm. towards those people. Now, does that mean you know in the future it's never possible? No, uh, nothing's really out of the realm of possibility and stuff if we see it. But as it is structured right now. I can't imagine that we would do it. It would have to be a kind of a newer type thing if we were to do that. Okay. And with it being only one difficulty mode instead of yeah. the normal and the veteran modes that we typically see, um, can you talk about the thought process behind designing it that way? So there's a couple reasons why we did uh, that. First of all, we, um, we wanted this to not be um, a separate instance space. Um, we didn't want this to be like, oh, I went into the duo version or I went into the solo version. We wanted this to be a, an experience for players to come in. And if they're solo and maybe they're not, you know, top tier, or they haven't pushed the levels. If they would, they get into it and they get to a stuck spot. Now this is really tough. They want, we wanted them to be able to say, Hey, I'm going to reach out to a friend, and bring them in here and say, Hey man, I need help on this thing. Cool. All right. Yes. I can jump in there and I can help you. And we don't have to reset it. And we don't have to go to a, a secondary, uh, thing. So I wanted to, that was part of like the design elements. We definitely wanted to make sure that um, people could bring in uh, friends if they needed help. And uh, when you start to, we also wanted to make sure to cut down on the uh, potential for exploited, exploited behavior or uh Areas where the the uh, you know the game can kind of get tripped up in logic and stuff like that. If you have one person in there and then it ups the difficulty because there's two people in there and then one person leaves and it you right. know what I mean like it becomes yeah. a, this this never ending situation <laughs> of like the they need to, the the game needs to understand what it, what it is that is happening. So when we decided that we said okay there's gonna be one difficulty this is how we're gonna do it then it was adapting all of the other elements to, to fit with it we knew that there were we wanted leaderboards you can mm -hmm. obviously can't have duo and solo leaderboards because solos will never get as high as the duo players we realized that so that was the implementation of saying okay we're gonna have a duo leaderboard we're gonna have a solo leaderboard make sure that we take care of kind of both of those play styles mm -hmm. so with it only being one yeah um you know for some players arc one is gonna be a pretty tough challenge for others it's just like yeah. 
you're gonna blast right through it yeah. was so the, the the whole scaling of it was that pretty hard to find a good balance Absolutely. that would okay I think you played on pts <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you even recognized uh early on when we saw people kind of go in there it's uh our, our uh the teams that we have to test and the various different teams that we had testing is it wasn't just qa we had internal tests and everything like that we get to a, a, a pretty reasonable spot in the game and then we, we put it in players hands and that pts feedback is very instrumental in how we're going to finally balance it. So you saw mm -hmm. some of the big changes that we had. We moved the entire stage. We understood that. We got that feedback. Um, not only that, we changed the scaling quite a bit uh, because we saw people getting up. Like somebody got to arc 18 once on PTS, and then we're like, <laughs> oh, that's that's a bit extreme. <laughs> so uh, we, we wanted to dial that back in order to really uh, challenge players, but they could get to the challenge because when you have that kind of like slower gradient where you can get to arc 18, there's a whole lot of not challenging stuff that you would have to go through so we, that's, that was the goal is to like say okay we want to get people to those challenges mm -hmm. sooner um but also maintain kind of the structure you know the visions are a very important part uh, of building your run so uh you know starting fresh from the beginning and even kind of going through the initial arc and stuff like that and then choosing your visions and building on that is is kind of instrumental yeah it felt to me kind of like arcs one and two were more like normal ish three and four kind of vet five six yeah. felt more like vet hard mode is that yeah. about where y'all yeah, lined that's up with it really what we wanted to there's some pretty big jumps at, at various arcs that i think that some people have kind of uh, started to see yeah i don't think i've seen anybody get to arc 12 yet but that's another big jump so uh so we're, we we, we oh, wanted okay. to institute some of those things of like okay well uh there's there's slight difficulty increases between each stage bigger increases between cycles and then stage or arcs have the biggest jumps and then there's like bands of arcs like arc three arc six stuff like that where there's gonna be much bigger jumps where you're gonna see mm -hmm. people are like oh i got to this and this became much harder um and and that's kind of what we were going for is like we're gonna separate the people and say okay you got to this now here's a real challenge yeah i noticed getting to arc six i think it was the boss's health it was like over double from what yeah. it was in the previous <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh okay they get, okay they get rough they get yeah. rough <laughs> um yeah, there, there's also been a lot of chatter about the Armory Assistant mm -hmm. in there. Um, originally on the PTS, it was usable, but then it was disabled due to it being leaderboard content. Yes. Um, can you walk us through the thought process behind the Armory Assistant, like overall not being allowed in leaderboard content, and then also, even though the there's no timer in the Endless Archive, why that's grouped together with the other leaderboard content when it comes to not right. allowing the Armory? So... Uh the second part, I'll talk, tackle that first. Why okay. the armory is, is it? And that's because we wanted a consistency with leaderboard content. We wanted to make sure if you come into it and you say there's a leaderboard here, I know I can't bring the army assistant. And that's why. Now, we have heard feedback. I know from you and from other people that said, yeah, but there's no time here. Should we do it? It's something that we could take a look at and consider. But at the moment, we're like, we just want to keep that consistency with leaderboard. Mm -hmm. As far as why armory assistant isn't allowed in leaderboard content, there's a couple reasons. First of all, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a crown store item. Um, which is great and it's a very big convenience, but we don't want to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, success is going to be limited by who was able to purchase something on the crown store or something like that. So if this becomes, you know, if the armory system becomes a really, really big advantage to you in timed content or leaderboard content, we don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that everybody, it's more of an even even footing there. Um, so we don't want to put it, like lock that kind of like uh, success behind that. I do see, so especially console players, like all yeah. the time, just like, why can't we have it in here? It would make life so much easier. I mean, and, and it's fine to to, to feedback and, and like i said nothing is anything we do is kind of like it's not particularly set in stone of like hardcore like if we get enough feedback and we can take a look and we can reevaluate decisions that we've made uh you know going forward in the future so it's not like it, it, again keep keep providing feedback don't ever you know look at it as like oh well you know uh, they said no, so it's never going to be a thing. That's not generally kind of how we operate. We want to take a look and get mm -hmm. uh, the sentiment of the players. And we can we can take a look and go back as a team and evaluate and say, is this something that we want to allow here? And what are the what are the pros and cons? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Changing gears, not directly related to the archive here, but it's something I had to get in. And Gina said it's okay, so I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, regard to difficulty balancing, there's been a lot of discussions over the last few years 
about the difficulty spike that was introduced in Trials, starting with Rockgrove and then Dread Sail and now Sanities. And it feels like the gap. Sanities is probably easier though, yeah. We dialed it back a little bit in Sanities. First two bosses, yes. Yeah. Last boss, hard mode is. Feels pretty well, rock grove and dread sale. Hard mode's different. Hard, <laughs> I will yeah. say that. So I think that. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go with your question. I didn't mean to go ahead with your. Question. Okay. No. No. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I think for a lot of people, it feels like the gap between vet and the hard modes are a lot wider than some of the previous trials, and it's left a lot of players. I know a lot of my more v veteran raid teams that you know we've conquered a lot of the really hard stuff. A lot of people are left in a situation where the vet versions are just like easy you just kind of blast through them but then the hard modes it's like all right we're looking at a six eight month prog to yeah get through there's just like a massive gap there and for a lot of people like that we're used to like okay we can conquer the trifectas now it's just like can we even clear the hard mode and for people that have done hard modes it's like i'm not even gonna try that that's just it's so hard now so i don't can you talk about the philosophy for the change in difficulty with, with going into rock grove and like is that something you guys are considering sure. adjusting at some point so going into rock grove and uh, dsr in particular we had a lot of feedback about difficulty of trials and people wanted uh meteor difficult more difficult experience now uh with rock grove and dsr we pushed uh veteran in particular um uh pretty hard so those those veterans for those at least initially when they came out and and for the good full year afterwards those are really tough dsr in particular is a very very tough trial um mm -hmm. we had an active uh we actively wanted to make uh sanity's edge more accessible so we dialed back some of the it doesn't mean it's any less deadly it just means that you can recover a bit better right i generally definitely noticed that for, yeah yeah which we're generally what we're going for but we also wanted to maintain the edge for the for the the top end players to say okay but when i tackle this i can tackle this in the hardest difficulty and uh make it difficult because i think that uh the the danger there is is if we dial it back too much then we'll get the feedback the opposite way of saying hey well now nothing's hard enough um that said again kind of reiterate what i said earlier is like that doesn't mean that nothing will ever change if we if we consistently get that feedback of you know like from from generally everybody and, and we take a look at completion rates and stuff like that and we take a look at who, who's doing what and how they're doing it um if we get that kind of feedback of like this is consistently just way too hard for the amount of people and we don't see the amount of people doing this that that we particularly uh w would be healthy or something like that we could take a look and we can reevaluate that stuff i think that what i uh, the hope is actually with the new uh group finder that came in with uh update 40 that we're going to see more people jumping in and tipping dipping their toes in trials which i think is uh on the large part good for the game because i think there's probably quite a few people that did not try trials mm -hmm. because of the the toughness with organizing and stuff like that and the more people we get to engage with the system the more feedback we're going to get with it so i think that'll help inform our decisions kind of a little bit in the future too yeah i thought so with with dread sale you guys put buffs in there for the first time and like uh like kind of like you you were doing with the dungeons yeah. right and the yeah. yeah the secrets and uh so I thought that had the potential to be a, a nice like yeah. in between, but then the buffs were, they're kind of random, which ones you're getting. Yeah. So they're, you can't rely on them super well. And they also disable the achievements when you yeah. use them as well. So it's kind of like, I, I felt like that might've been the right direction to kind of give that middle ground. But then uh -huh. most people just were like, well, if I don't get the achievement, I, right. not, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So personally, I think that could be, an interesting route. Uh, we don't we don't do the buffs in every uh, trial. I think it was the only one. So, right. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there is a a bit of pressure uh, as a team to kind of do that. We were we had the we had the ability to do it when we did DSR. Um, didn't have the ability to do it when we did Rock Rope and stuff like that. Which uh, so um, 
I wouldn't anticipate us saying, oh, well, there's definitely going to be buffs in any any other trial that we do. Mm -hmm. um, but it is good to get the feedback of saying, hey, man, that felt like it kind of bridged the gap or, or made this a little bit easier or something like that. So we could potentially take a look at that. I think also part of so part of the philosophy behind dungeons and we have side content in dungeons is there's a time component. There's also a damage component. But so when you go to get the buffs, you're almost surely not going to get the speed run because you had to take the time to go get the secrets. Um, and in uh, BSR, there wasn't that. They was just kind of on the path. You would just see right. the things and do the thing. So there wasn't a time component to doing that. So we wanted to counterbalance that because we wanted people that uh, to that wanted to get those best achievements. We wanted them to do it. You know, it's just their skill only. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that, I mean that makes sense. So. Usually with the dungeons, if I'm doing a trifecta, we're like, all right, we 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 might have time to go get this buff here, and then you know we'll we'll yeah, skip yeah. the other two or all something right. like that. Back to the archive, I guess. Sure. So the uh, we have the verses and the visions, and yeah. for those that don't know, those are the short and the long term buffs you pick up along the way. I thought these were pretty diverse and creative. Yeah. They're all over the place. Uh, can you walk us through how the team went? about putting these together and how you decided what wouldn't wouldn't make the cut for the archive um yeah that was kind of like a, a collaborative effort one one of uh, the main designers for that was uh one of the, one of my designers named billy and he kind of uh broke down and 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 he plays a lot he's a, mainly a console player but he plays a lot of uh of eso so he was taking a look at what you know would be beneficial and then we had lists that we sent around kind of internally to the team to say what makes sense what doesn't make sense what can we build what can we not build what uh would be fun and stuff like that and we had the three categories pretty early on we wanted offense defense and utility um and it was really the the toughest one to come up with was, was utility uh because it's these are supposed to be a lot of time a lot of the early designs and stuff like that was like well this is utility but it's just more damage and it's like right. <laughs> okay well let's, that needs to be more offense and stuff like that so we had a we had a, a good and then i think that the utility angle is really what caught the creative juices flowing like gilded slight is still one of my favorites where you just punch a guy and a gold pile falls out <laughs> still one of my favorite uh of uh versus um but uh so yeah, it was it was kind of a yeah long process of like going through and saying okay this makes sense and this doesn't make sense and stuff like that. I know some people have called out they're like yeah but now we're tying into some things that we don't typically tie into because generally there was a homogenized uh, attitude towards especially abilities where he says well this is going to be either stamina or magic or whichever one's higher and stuff like that and we and we've gone away from you know martial and magic and stuff like that. But these buffs absolutely play into that that system which may seem like a relic but we wanted it to, to give a little bit more diversity and make those those verse choices in particular um a uh, deliberate choice that you're going to make it's like oh, okay we want to give you more variety and when they pop up you go okay this is definitely something i want to do i think it was uh i was running endless archive uh earlier on my eu character and i think i got class embodiment like three times in a row and i was like all right <laughs> money let's do it i'm an arcanist and all class abilities. yeah I'm like, let's money that one's so good <laughs> <laughs> well to that point um i've noticed that with the verses and visions some are definitely more powerful than other yes. ones um for example cold blast it does like a little bit of aoe damage and it's only every 10 seconds yeah while swift gale is like yep. a lot of damage yeah, every have... light attack yeah yeah so I guess it probably was intentional to have some yeah. feel really strong compared to others. Okay. Um, Absolutely. And, and the reason for that was, I mean, we want those. So uh, one of the, the, the fantasy elements that we had here and one of the, the, the big things that we wanted to, to push here is like when the stars align, you know, you're on your run, you're at a tough spot. You're like, oh, I get this boss. All right, I'm going to get through the stage. All right, I got through the stage. And then you see the the verses come up. And you're like, oh, cool. Now I've aligned and I've gotten the thing. And uh, now I get to choose this. And and I, I have had this shine. Those are feel good moments of like, oh, cool. I got a really good thing I can use. And I'm just going to wipe the floor with this. That's also the stacking uh, visions that lead to a verse potential. The werewolf be behemoth the ice avatar and uh the iron astronaut uh, vi uh versus those, those are, are those so play good into that. yeah <laughs> no, they play into that exact same thing of like oh like if you get a boss uh, like a tough boss 
and you get werewolf behemoth right before you're like this dude's dead this is yeah. not even close <laughs> so so those are those are kind of those elements that we want and those are those are feel-good moments of kind of everything aligning up to say mm. now i've gotten this big thing so yes yeah, some of those are definitely going to be more uh desirable than others gotcha so right now, uh, I think you guys said there's between 60 to 70 bosses yeah. in the archive currently. Uh, I'm sure some of those were more difficult to implement Absolutely. into there than others. Uh, were yeah. there any in particular you could think of that were a big challenge to adapt their mechanics? Um, the dragons uh, were initially pretty tough, in particular uh, YOLO, uh, because uh, the nature of how he operates in the trial is way different than him, the way he needs to operate in here. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have to go through and strip out abilities and, and do stuff. Pretty much a lot of the trial bosses that we, that we adapted here because they're used to fighting 12 people. They're used to having two tanks. They're used to having all these elements that they need to challenge people with that we don't have as available in here. So taking a look at what abilities, um, would make sense. And then also just adjusting them or adding kind of some new stuff that maybe you didn't see in that fight, but would make sense in here. I think we have a Blood Knight that does some stuff that uh, 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 Kynes, uh, the final boss in Kynes does. So, uh, you know, taking a look at, at, at some of those uh, elements and then taking the edge off, but also like, hey, do we even need these elements in here and stuff? So... Um, yeah, there was. I, I would say most of the trial bosses, I think, were, were pretty tough uh, to do. Uh, a lot of the other stuff, story bosses, group bosses, even dungeons to some extent, were a little bit easier to adapt because we right. uh, we just have to take the edge off of tank hits and stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, their mechanics are going to work largely uh, uh, well. And it's just, uh, yeah, the trial bosses dialing them back was, was the big one. Speaking of bosses, I've seen some people, I, I just thought this was an interesting suggestion. Um, so right now the trash or the base pop in the archive, it's, it doesn't seem quite as diverse as the bosses are. Once you've run it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a few times through, it's kind of like, all right, I've, I, I know what enemies I'm getting yeah. here. I saw some people saying like, oh, it'd be cool if in the later arcs, like, actual bosses started like replacing trash mobs and stuff like marauders <laughs> yeah so, yeah sort of uh that kind of deal but like a more um i guess consistent sort of deal um is there any plans to like shake up the trash mobs potentially like a, a, as uh kind of referring back to what i originally said of, of kind of how this structure was built um it's absolutely within the realm of possibility to do some of these suggestions or to to take a look we just have to take a look at the time we have and what makes sense and stuff like that for mm -hmm. for, for if we were to, to to kind of make adjustments and stuff like that but it isn't absolutely out out of the realm of possibility now adapting a boss that's currently in there into a stage is not so easy uh just because the boss is the one advantage that we had was the boss stage is always the same so any boss we put in there Right. We could just say, okay, I know the parameters for how this is working. But the stages are way different. Uh, so right. uh, using that, I would say, uh, I, I would say we would probably, if, if we were to do something in the future, we'd probably look to doing new types of marauders rather than reusing some bosses and stuff like that. Now, th okay. there's some marauders that were bosses anyways. One of the avatars or something like that was in there too. So mm -hmm. yeah, so the there's, there's, there's other bosses that... Uh, or there's other elements that we could we could tweak to to kind of serve that. Also, the fabled uh, there there's a there's a variety of fabled. Those would be something that we could take a look at that we'd say, oh, you know, potentially shake those up to get a little more of that. A little um, more variety there, yeah. A little more variety in there too, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, another thing I've seen a lot of players ask about, and I think we've talked about this slightly, but. Uh, a way to save progress in the archive. I know a lot of people are just like. It, even though it's much quicker now than it was on the PTS, it's still like if you push really far, it ends up taking quite a while. Is is this just something um, you guys can't do right now, but uh, maybe there will be a way to save? Or is is that something you, you guys intentionally don't want in so, the archive? At the moment, there, we, 
we don't want uh, there's there's so much tied into that progression and doing everything there's the build up of visions there's the build up of verses there's also exploitation behaviors that you can get into if you have two people in there and they're saving progress and then they branch out and they get two more people and everybody jumps it becomes this this uh, never ending wormhole of mm-hmm. trying to solve potential bugs that said gotcha that doesn't mean we don't hear the feedback and uh it, it, there, there are potential other ways to solve uh, the um, the feedback the players are, or there's other ways to address the feedback the players are kind of suggesting there. Mm-hmm. So uh, potentially, if there was something in the future, it might be something that we would target and take a look at. But at, right at, right now, at the moment, and the initial blush and the initial like release of this, um, there's so much tied up into, like I said, there's so much tied up into building your run uh, that uh, to. We don't have a way to, or we haven't, we we haven't put in a way to to kind of address all of that. And and I think that even even a a, a saver, skip, or something like that, that potentially has its own. It's also fraught with its own uh, problems too. So, okay, there was a change on the PTS to add in Overland set drops to the yes. cycle boss, which I thought was a big improvement. Um, yeah. I haven't gone through and collected all my Overland stuff, so there you go. This week, I've already <laughs> filled out my Mark Meyer and Gruntwood now. <laughs> there you so. go. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, that was nice. Um, I I saw some people suggesting like it'd be cool if the bosses you fight maybe drop a have a chance or or maybe drop a piece from the content they originally come from, which could open up like you know it's. <laughs> It's not really a way to farm gear from that because it's so random, yeah. but it would it would be kind of like a, a fun little thing. Like, oh, I got uh, a piece from Cloudrest or, you know, what if there's a, you know, end yeah. up being Zamaja in there at some point or, you know, I, something like that. I've heard the feedback on that. Um, there's a couple things with that. First of all, Dungeons and Trials, we really want people that uh, are doing the Dungeons and Trials in order to get that loot. So we're really reluctant to add Dungeons and Trial loot to uh, non-Dungeons and Trial content. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only that, uh, I'm just thinking of the data setup for that, and it's pretty insane. Uh, okay. <laughs> to set up the data for for how that would operate, like how we kind of have it right now, is is a pretty good setup for for exactly what we want to do. And uh, but to to take a look at the the back end data setup on that for uh, the future with you're getting into the specificity of what it is because the chests don't actually know who you fought and all this other stuff so there's right. a whole okay. lot of like potential issues with that that i don't imagine that would be something that we would we would be able to take a look at i hear the feedback and and we would probably address the feedback another way if people said oh it'd be really cool to see trial and dungeon loot in here we can evaluate that as a team and say hey is this something that we want to add in here as a potential thing that would be good, but I don't know that it would be tied to the very specific boss that you were right. Writing. Okay. Um, so I really like the idea of the account wide unlocks in there. I'm yeah, I'm almost at 100k fortunes already. Nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been at it. Um, get them all unlocked, but uh, I think it just really enhances the experience yeah. overall. And it's like uh, once I get those unlocked, it's it's just a little bit better, you know, with each yeah. one. Um. Uh, so once those are all unlocked, that kind of progression in there is is done though. So, right. um, kind of tying back into, the, I guess, future ways to improve it. Um, do you see more account wide unlocks possibly that's, going in there? Okay. I mean, that's that's kind of like, uh, and I hate to to sound like a broken record here, but that's kind of like what I talked about when we built it from that strike. And it's mm-hmm. not just how we built the base pop and the marauders and the fabled and the bosses and all the other stuff it's also the reward structures and the reward mechanisms that we have you can take a look at it and then you said earlier you're like oh, i have my head spinning on or my gear spinning on how i could do that all of that plays into it so mm-hmm. when we take a look at um that kind of stuff and potentially if we were to do stuff in the future there's a lot of knobs that we could twist from a lot of different teams that we would do it i actually think that the gold vendor in there is really really cool mm-hmm. um just as a, 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 a as as a as another uh a way to kind of spend fortunes on stuff that you might you maybe haven't seen before or, or haven't interacted with before too so i in particular i'm going to fill out my companion gear with that guy so uh when it when they have all the things that i need so i can just buy all my companion gear and yeah get all purple stuff so but uh 
yeah i do like uh but but yeah those elements are it's like there's 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 spaces on the tables so to speak <laughs> mm -hmm. well i mean it i'm glad to hear that that's all like going yeah. on with with y'all too because like you know you get some content like like black rose prison it's kind of released and then it, it is it is what it is right. um maybe some small balance tweaks but with yeah. this it's more like i'm excited to hear that it's it is something y'all want to keep on adding to and keep expanding in the future that's that's exciting because i love i love the archive i think it's a really cool new idea for the game so i'm 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 really happy with and i've told the team this too uh i am uh ecstatic uh of how this came out and the team absolutely crushed it this was a a big effort we sat down with the team there was a lot of excitement but there was a lot of a lot of trepidation because we just haven't done this kind of thing before so we had to figure out the problems before we figured out the solutions to the problems so uh going through here and witnessing the process and seeing the dedication and the time that everybody put into it i'm i'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out yeah, it, it was, I mean, it was a big departure from, I think, what anyone expected. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah, when you hear stuff like Endless Dungeon, you're like, well, what the hell does that mean? So, <laughs> I think that uh, uh, we kind of nailed it. We, we, we wanted to, you know, roguelike inspired, roguelite inspired uh, to, to, to get some of those, but then also an ESO twist and, and, and to make sure that the, the elements that make ESO great also are carried forward through here. So, yeah, this was. This is the first year in a while, I guess, where it wasn't the normal release cadence of like Q3 as a dungeon pack, Q4, yep. another overland zone added right, in. Right. Um, ha has the feedback been pretty good about you guys changing that up? And I mean, I, I'm all for like oh. changing up the cadences and like yeah, getting yeah. something you don't really expect. Right, is it pretty hard right. to switch up that release schedule and do uh, something different? It's really weird. So it is and it isn't. So if you look at, we didn't have a quarter three dungeon pack, but we did have endless dungeon and a quarter four. If you look at time wise, though, that was done in the framework of a quarter three dungeon pack. So it, because again, it was it was we dedicated that kind of time to it and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so far the feedback has been really good, especially with U forty. We had a lot of cool stuff come in with U forty, um, dungeon finder. Uh, the crafting stations, the mm -hmm. Grandmaster crafting stations, jewelry crafting rework, and then of course endless archive. So uh, having kind of like those elements, uh, you know, you know, or, or seeing the feedback from players has generally been been really positive uh, and 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 accepting kind of what we were planning on doing and stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm loving the update. It's uh, it's in like a few years, I think, since I've like been excited about a piece of content like this. So, like it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's like right up my alley because I really like uh, like Diablo stuff, like the yeah. the riffs running those, yeah. and like I just like that type of gameplay. So yeah, this kind of yeah. fills that niche for me yeah. in, in there. So I think that's awesome. all I had. So I appreciate right. you yeah, taking the time to do this. Man. Yeah, no yeah. problem, dude. Cool. Well. Have a great rest of your day. I hope it's not too, too crazy for you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right. Talk All to right, you later. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. And a big shout out to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The contributions help a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blake1816, Mordecai 1212, Santonico, Vidridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Chriseliana, Cha Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, and Pletpron. Thanks again and see you later. Uh, bye.